you're you're in New you're in New Jersey. I'm in Israel. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Today, let's give it shalom. And page Reshnun Bet. And the parsha is about Yosef, right? I think told us. Ani Yosef. Yeah. So the topic is Vei Hashem et Yosef. Hashem is like we with Yosef, Vei Ish Matzliach, and he will be a very successful man. Vei Hashem et Yosef, Vei Ish Matzliach, and Hashem was with with Yosef. It also sounds like in the future that he will be with, but or present, right? And Yosef will be, or he is, a successful man. And his master saw that Hashem is with him. Or see, right, what, what, that Hashem is with him. And anything that Yosef is doing, Hashem Hashem giving him, uh, you know, to be successful. And Rashi explained, what does it mean that Hashem is with him? Hashem Shamaim Shagur Befiv. Every time you say, Baruch Hashem, Bezrat Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Bezrat Hashem, right? Siyat HaDishmaya. And the Rambam, Ramban is bringing a Midrash, Midrash Rabba. Shaya Melachesh Venichnas Melachesh Veyotze. That he was like mumbling, you couldn't hear, he was whispering something, you know. His master was asking to do something, and he was... So you say that he's saying something, like, and, and you know, people... Okay, today, if you think about it, like 40 years ago, 30 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, when people were speaking to themselves in the car, in the street, you think they're, they're a little bit crazy. But today you can speak to Hashem, to Hashem or just speak to yourself in the car, and everybody knows that uh, you speak to, the, to, the, to somebody with the phone, right? Mm -hmm. You speak to yourself. I do that sometimes. I speak to myself. Everybody think I'm on the phone. Uh -huh. Yeah? <laughs> so he said, so the Ramban brings for the Midrash Rabbah, Amarlo Adonav, his master is, is commanding him. Mezog Rotchim, pour me hot water. And the water are hot. Pour me uh, mild uh, water, whatever. And uh, they're mild temperature. The wait, wait. Who, who's the master? I, I'm confused for one second. Yosef has, Yosef's. The Putifar, right? Yosef was, was sold first. And he was, the, he was the servant in the house of Putifar. Oh, oh, oh we're, we're in the house. Okay, that's the part I missed. We're in the house now. Okay. Yeah, so his master is telling him, pour me hot water. The water are hot. Right. Pour me mild temperature. Mild temperature. And fought his master that uh, Yosef is doing uh, witchcraft. Because he, he remembers him, right? He's asking to do something and he's saying, and then the water are hot. Ah, you are doing witchcraft. So he told him, <laughs> So he's telling him, Teven ata machnis l'ofraim, shafim ata machnis l'mitzraim. So Teven is like uh, wheat. Wheat. So Ofraim was actually a, a centralized place for wheat and flour in the Shomron. So he's bringing like, you're trying to, like you, you're bringing ice to Antarctica. You're bringing wheat to the, to the center of wheat. You're bringing witchcraft to Egypt. Egypt is the source of the witchcraft, like who you are that you're bringing witch, witchcraft to here. Until he see that actually the Shechina is standing on Yosef's shoulder. So he understood, oh, oops, you know, it's not witchcraft. So that's why it says, Vayar Adonav. Vayar is also like he was fearing that Hashem is with him. He's fear from that. Or he saw that Hashem is with him. He see that. The Rambam explained, you know, so what? That, does Putifar have the merit actually to see, to see the Shekhinah? Why is it Tzaddik? He's not a Tzaddik, right? He was a, an executor. He was an executor. So the Rambam explained, for the honor of Yosef, he saw the Shekhinah. They showed him the Shekhinah for the honor of Yosef. Right? In the Maresh in Eretlo Bachalom, Oba Kitz, Bamudana, like whether if it was like in a dream or whether it was like Hakitz is during the daytime when you are awake, we can still dream, right? So, whatever was the, uh, the circumstances or the, the ability to see, he see that. 
ונוכח לראות כהצלחתו הגדולה הוא בעבור כי השם איתו, שהשכינה עומדת על גביו. And he, he, he acknowledged that he saw that Yosef great success is because Hashem is with him. So one explanation is that Yosef always saying Bezrat Hashem, Baruch Hashem, etc. And another explanation is that the Putifar master, right, he see that the Shina is with Yosef. That was Yosef level, that he was always cleaving in Hashem. Whether the Shina was with him and, and Putifar see it, or whether he was saying all the time, you know, it's not me, it's Hashem, Bezrat Hashem, Baruch Hashem. That was his level. He was never neglecting Hashem. He was always thinking about it. And that's why he was a successful man, because Hashem is with him. And everything that he did, he do, he's succeeding. Moshe Avi Yesod HaAvoda, he bring in the name of the Moroi Nebuchim from the Rambam, Shemisha Davuk Bashem Yitbarach, En Shorim Alav Dinim. Anyone that is cleaving to Hashem doesn't have a dinim, judgment. And everything that he does, he's succeeding, because Hashem with him. But only when he is like, stopping or pausing or holding with the cleaving to Hashem, he's like forgetting about it, right? Then it's like he's removing his thought from Hashem and Hashem is removing his supervision from him. And now he's on his own. Because when his thoughts are going around from Hashem, right? Then it's Midah can I get Midah. He's separating himself from Hashem. Okay, so Hashem is separating from him. Right? And then it's like chas v'chalila is mezuman lechol ra. Right? Mezuman, in Hebrew, we have few meanings. One is cash money. Mezuman is cash money, which you have money. money. And mezuman is something that is available, available to you, right? So that's why when we say in the Birkat Amazon, let's have a mezuman, because the people are available for for doing the Birkat Amazon. Three people are available, mm. 10 people are available, right? So he said, so he's available, chas v'chalila, to bad things that can happen to him because he removed himself from Hashem, Hashem removed his supervision from him. So he's now mezuman, he's available for negative things that possibly that they will find him. And he writes over there that the Chachamim and the Hasidim were very careful to all the time to have, to, 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 to fulfill Shiviti Hashem Tamid. That they were very careful not to remove their thought from Hashem. And also the people, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying sometimes to do that. Shiviti Hashem is to imagine that you have the, the letter of Yudke, Vavke, you know, in front of you all the time, to see the letter, to imagine them. So that means that you're thinking about Hashem the whole time. What, what's, what's the word, Beshif? Veshiviti, with, ve, with, uh, with Vav. Veshavti, right, or Yashavti, it's to sit. But Shiviti, it's from, from uh, not to equalizing, but to imagine. To imagine that the Shem name is in front of you, right? So the Hasidim and the Chachamim were always being careful not to neglect their thought from Hashem. And all the bad things that happened to the Chachamim and to the Prophet, to the Vim, were only when they, they stopped cleaving to Hashem, they stopped the Dveikut. And that was the level of yourself and the level of the Gedusha and the Tahara. Because he was always Davuk in Hashem, he was always cleaving to Hashem. And therefore, anything that he was doing was succeeding. As it says, right? Kmochen and also the Dveikut is also the cleaving to Hashem, it's depending on the level of the Gedusha. How a person is separating himself from the negative thing, right? Because to, to, to be Kadosh, right, you need to separate yourself from, from whatever nonsense we have. And cleaving only the Kevan Shosef it and Yosef was always behaving with that in the Gedusha and the Tahara. Right? Tahara again is a technical thing when you you don't touch things and you don't sit on things, you, you do to mikve, etc. That's a technicality thing. And Gedusha is really to separate yourself and and to, to daven, and to learn, whatever. So he was keeping the Gidusha and Tara, not only in the spiritual thing, but also in all the materialistic things, and all the needs that he had, all the physical needs that he had. And he never neglected Hashem from the thought. And that, therefore, he was always cleaving to Hashem, he's always with Hashem. Which is not the same when somebody that doesn't behave in Gidusha and Tara, 
in the Gashmir thing, in the thing, right? Like Rabbi Zuknikol used to say, like, uh, there are people that are keeping Shabbos and everything, but when they do business, they, they, are, they are running over other people, which is, which is wrong. Because it means that they, they remove themselves from, from Hashem, right? But not yourself. That was his level. He's always living to Hashem. Omnam, indeed. This is a very high level, very high level. And it's very distant, right? It's very, it's very far away for us to, to get to that level, always to think about the Shem. And he will never neglect his, his thought from him. But he said, but still we do have like a lower level that we can achieve. Everybody can achieve. And this is what the Rav HaKadosh Mikal in Zechotor Gelen, he wrote on, on Ma'amar Chazal from, from the from the Gemara Chulim. There is, there is a quote over there. He should like notify the, 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 the people or the majority about his Sarah, uh, about his trouble, and many will ask mercy on him. You know, tell to many people and many people will have it for you. But he said, you should say, here, it's like, in the Hebrew, the, the pasuk is like, notify your, your, your sorrow, or your agony, or your trouble to the, to the manis, and manis will ask for rachamim, will request, right? What, request rachamim for? For that person, because they have a trouble. So, so when they say daven for so-and-so, that's what you mean by that? Yeah. Many people will daven. But here it says, Yodiyat saro la rabim, ve rabim yivakshim ala v'achamim. Shat shikh loma, rabim yivakshu ala v'achamim. Right? You should say that, okay, many will ask for him, for, for mercy. But, what does it mean, Yodiyat saro? What is the saar to the rabim, to the many? It says, kasher yodi davuk lechevruta, when a Jew is cleaving to a chevruta, of people, like gang of people, right, a, a group of people that they hear Hashem, people that fear Hashem. Only by doing that, being with these people, that himself will bring on him mercy, even without asking. Okay. Why? Because the Tsar, his, his, his agony, his trouble, is because the judgment, the level of judgment is on him because he stopped He's cleaving to Hashem. He's not with Hashem anymore. But when he is cleaving to the many people, he's a part of a congregation, a kehila, and among them, for sure we have one, <laughs> at least, that's <laughs> cleaving to Hashem. Right? As like it's Sadiq. Right? So now he's attached himself to him. Now, now, we have to, now we have to figure out who that one is, right? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, so at least we have one, you know, at least one. Right? So by doing that, the judgment will be sweetened because of the tzibur. Right? The tzibur. By the way, you know, tzibur is acronym for tzaddikim, benonim, right? Reshaim, and yud. You can write tzibur without a yud or with a yud. So yud is like the, the Hashem. So we need to have the sages people, the wicked people, you know, the mediocre people, right? That's the tzibur. So at least in one, in one tzibur, you will have somebody that's living to Hashem. And by doing that, the judgment will be sweetened. And therefore they said, that many ask mercy on him, because he's cleaving to the many. So, it's like, it sounds that many people will ask mercy on him, but no, he said, if you look at the Pasuk, it's like the mercy is asking <laughs> to have mercy on him by default. Even if the people really don't know and they don't dive in specifically for that person but because he's with that group then the mercy itself will be dwelling on them but does it matter how many righteous people in the uh he, he, said, in the at group? Least one. he said at least one so then so if there's one then it's a minion and it and that and that makes it okay yeah. Yeah. well that, that's actually good because you know when you go to these minyanim and uh you got yeah. like, what just happened? As Rabbi Zuknik always says, like, what just happened there? Yeah. But there's always at least one person there who really wanted to be there. Yeah, Ruch Hashem. 
Look, the, the classic. So that made well, the minion, right? Yeah. Okay. The classic. That, is well, that makes me. That makes me feel better when I go to these minyanim and I have no idea what's going on. At least there's one person who does. Oh sure. And you know, and okay. and, and we learn it from from his dome, right? From the parsha. O okay. over, there, over there, fine. It's talking about like Avram when he was doing the Middle Eastern bargaining with the, with Hashem. You know, he will destroy right. the whole city for 50, 45, 30, 20, right? He's stopping 10. But I'm saying, you know, just imagine there were 10 tzaddikim, modest people, you don't hear from them. Maybe they sit all day in shul, you know, they, are, they don't work, whatever. Everybody look at them negatively. But because of these 10 people, right, million are saved. Right. Right? So that's why it's the same thing. Like you have at least one tzaddik in a minion, then the mercy will apply to all of them because of him. But nobody knows. Nobody right? knows. It's like, it's like to be a, a, a secret agent, right? CIA agent. They do something like unbelievable, saving people, everything, but you don't know about it because it's a secret. You're not supposed to know. Right, right. Yeah. Like I told, I told, I must have mentioned to you. I when I back at the IDF, I had a conversation one time with a, uh, a, a you know, a secular Israeli, and you know, she was the, she was explaining, you know, how angry the Israelis are at the the Haredim for you know just being leeches off the. So, yeah. all I said to her was, "How do you know it's not?" That these people are learning is what's it's what's keeping uh, Israel, uh, you know, and you know also, I, and then I mentioned it to Rabbi Zupnik because it, you know he must have been talking about something like this, mm -hmm. and I said you know I had and I told him the same story I had this conversation whatever, and I said to her that, and he and I said how do you know I was very careful to say how do you know it's not them rather than it's because of them. And when I said, how do you know? And I said the same thing to Rabbi Zupnik. He says, we don't know. <laughs> so we don't know. I mean, they're you saying cannot, this. You, you could not deny it, right? But, but we can't say for sure. But, and you're not going to tell it to a secular Israeli. It's because of the guy's learning that that's why you're still, you know, Israel is still alive. Yeah, I agree. But we can do, we can, we can say that even before we had the idea, you know, the Jews exist uh, many years uh, without, right? All right. Okay. So let's but I want, you know, I wasn't qualified to argue with a secular Israeli. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you would, maybe Matana would have uh, beat them up, but you know, I don't have a chance. <laughs> okay. Like I told you when I was, when she, when she wanted to speak there. Yeah, let's just finish this one. So we said from the, okay, the, from the strength of the tzibur, of the minion, of the public, of the congregation, for sure there are others, right. or at least one that is living to Hashem. And by having that, then the mercy are being requested like by default for on the tzibur. And all the judgment will be sweetened. Even if, you know, they're not really requesting it, the mercy right. will come by default. And especially in Shabbos Kodesh, Moshe Pershu, as our, our sages explain, Namar Chazal, right, that uh, every day has its own mate, Sunday have Monday, right, Thursday have Friday, right, Friday, right, Shabbat has whom? They said, Knesset Israel will be your mate. That's it. What does it mean? It means that the Jews are congregating and they're living and they're being together, right, in the minion. That's the mate of the Shabbos. And what's the Indian? The essence of Shabbat itself, it's cleaving to Hashem. Everything is related to Hashem, right? Shmon de Katuv, as it says, the new Ben Bnei Israel, right? The Shabbat is between me and Hashem and, and, and in Bnei Israel, right? It's a sign, it's the mark for always, infinite, that the Jew will be cleaving to Hashem. And when a Jew is stopping it, putting Hashem on hold, right? Then in Shabbat Kodesh, it, that's again, then he says it's like he's making a hole. halal Making a hole in Shabbos. It says, Anyone that desecrates Shabbat it should be executed. Why? Because he's making a hole in Shabbos. What's the only advice for that? It's Knesset Israel. A hole like a, like, like a like hole, hole meaning... Like a hole in a bagel. Okay, fine. A hole. Yeah. yeah. Got it. It's destroying. So what's the only advice for that? It's Knesset Israel. Knesset, again, 
the word Beit Knesset is congregating, is being together. That's the word. So being together with Israel, we should always cleaving to the tzibur of the Jews because for certainly at least we'll have one or many, or few, that are cleaving to Hashem. And by doing that, attaching yourself to a congregation, to a kehila, right, then again you will attach yourself to Hashem. And the Rav, the Maran Admor, Baal Bet Avram, he wrote in, the, in a letter, right, שבכדי לשבת עם, עם יהודים יחד בליל שבת קודש, צריך מסירות נפש. Like he said, in order for us to sit together with the Jews in, in Shabbos, you need a מסירות נפש, you need to, to give your soul. Really to do that. ואיינו לפי שיקר, because that's the main essence of the Shabbat, that the Jews should be cleaving to Hashem. And that's very difficult to, to achieve, to cleaving to Hashem. Hashem is fire, whatever, metaphorically. But by sitting together with the congregation, then he's bringing himself the Dvekut on Hashem. And this is what Yosef had. Even though he was alone, right, no congregation, he was the tzaddik, but he was always mumbling and always know that Hashem is with him. So whenever his master asking him to do something, you know, pour me hot water, Hashem, Bezrat Hashem, please <laughs> make the water hot enough. Right. Right? That's right. it. Right. We, we, we tend to forget, me especially, but even when we do our, our grocery shopping in the supermarket, we should always think, Hashem, you know, bring me good tomatoes, cucumbers, you know, <laughs> the leak will not spoil. Everything you do, you know, please make me sure that I will find the right shoes for me, that I will be able to walk, you know, comfortably, whatever. Always then. That was the middle of Yosef. And by doing that, it was always with Hashem. And, and to honor Yosef, the tzaddik, Hashem actually enabled his master, the wicked person, to see the Shekhinah and to understand, oops, uh -huh. not witchcraft. So that, that's a lesson for us always to remember Hashem. There's what Hashem, you know, I know I'm, uh, I'm traveling I mean, in Israel, so it's very difficult to keep uh, two days and to keep uh, regular days with this uh, random, hectic uh, time that we are uh, living now. Uh, but uh, Bezrat Hashem, soon we will be back and uh, we can uh, continue as normal.